All right, let me set the scene for you. I'm in Amsterdam with two friends that I've known for 10 years. Mm -hmm. On my birthday, we're partying at the Bulldog, and I'm telling one of my girls, like, listen, you and him always break up, and you always have to buy him something. Buy him rims, buy him a condo. You always have to buy this man something. Now he's emailing you saying, buy me tickets to Egypt. And I told her, like, listen, if you want to get back with him, get back with him. But don't give him any more money. And the next morning, they actually left. I had known these girls for 10 years. But shout out to these girls who left me on vacation because I started a course and ended up making $1.5 million in 18 months. Whoa. I started a course for women who wanted to solo travel. So now I've been featured on CNN, CBS National News, Forbes, USA Today, Essence Magazine. And all of that started because two people decided to be mean girls. Um. So, so first things first, I definitely want to find out how do you fly for free? Yeah. Because a lot of people yeah. think that if you are traveling the world for free, that you must be using credit cards. But but you don't necessarily have to use credit cards, right? Really? Yeah, so here's a few things, right? First thing is, most people don't know this, but you can actually get free flights and free hotel stays by doing surveys. All right, so welcome back to another episode of Motion and Success. My name is Cody, and I have my co-host, it's Io. And yeah, we back on another episode uh, All right. Today, we got a really special guest, bro. Like, yes. This is going to be one of them ones, bro. It's definitely going to be <laughs> one of them ones. So on this episode, Motion and Success meets Shakima, a.k.a. the Passport Abuser. She has been to over 80 plus countries, nearly 100 plus countries. In less than three years, yeah. she has been all over the country, and she's going to teach you exactly how to do the same thing on this episode. So, Keem, Shakima, the Passport Abuser, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey guys, my name is Shakima Smith, but everybody in the internet streets knows me as the passport abuser. I have been a female solo traveler for the past seven years, and for the past three years, I have helped 11,000 people travel the world for free. For free? Yes. Not even a few dollars out of pocket? <laughs> nah, like man. Free? Nah, nah. We, gotta, we, yo, we gotta we gotta mm. jump into it. We got we definitely gotta jump into it. So before I even ask you like how'd you even get your name Passport Abuser, like <laughs> just give us a little bit of a backstory, like what kind of got you into, you know, wanting to travel the world? What did you do before, you know, you started traveling? Like a little bit of a backstory. Yeah, so uh guys, I am from East Orange, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I am one of six kids. Yeah. And I worked as an investigator and I worked in the social work field with children. I absolutely love to travel whenever I had some free time. So, you know, I'm traveling, always doing my girly trips two, three times a year. I was addicted. Mm -hmm. And then I decided I'm just going to solo travel. From there, that just opened up the floodgates for so many different other things for me. Mm, that is dope. And you said solo travel because... I'm not even going to lie, like, a lot of girls, they, they got that fear of traveling solo. Like, they got to go. And then I, I and then I even met some girls who they'd be like, I don't like her, but I don't got nobody else to go with. So uh. they, they go on a trip with somebody they don't like. See why I travel solo? <laughs> yep. <laughs> or they come back, oh, this person, you know, they being cheap on a vacation. And they just come back, and then it's, it's like, you know, now they don't mess with this person. Now it's a whole bunch of drama afterwards. So what got you into solo traveling like what what was that like what got you into it drama oh, drama wow. okay uh so let me give you guys the tea okay all right let me set the scene for you i'm in amsterdam with two friends that i've known for 10 years mm -hmm. mm. okay on my birthday all right mm. uh we're partying at the bulldog and i'm telling one of my girls like listen you and him always break up and you always have to buy him something buy him rims buy him a condo you always have to buy this man something mm. now he's emailing you saying buy me tickets to egypt and i told her like listen if you want to get back with him get back with him but don't give him any more money and uh, the next morning, they actually left. I had known these girls for wow. 10 years. These are not girls that, you know, we only knew each other for a year or two, or we were co-workers, and we decided to go on vacation. Yeah. Um, needless to say, after that, I never, ever 
ever told any other friend what I think about their man. Ever. It just ruined it for me. They're like, girl, what you think I should do? Do you? I'm like, I don't know. Like, you know, I just, I never really got into it. And it's weird because when I called her and I was like, yo, where are y'all? And she was like, oh, we left. Derek loves me. And you're going to see that. Wow. I was like, okay, you know what? I don't want to travel with girls anymore. So all the stories that you hear about things yeah. happening on girls trips, it's true. <laughs> wow. A trip like, like... And and you know what? These were women that I had known for so many diff- so many years. So I don't think it was the girls' trip because we had traveled so many times before. I think it was me telling her something about her man that she probably knew was true, mm. and she just didn't want to hear it. But shout out to these girls who left me on vacation because I started a course and ended up making one point five million dollars in eighteen months. Whoa! <laughs> I started a course for women who wanted to solo travel. So now I've been featured on CNN. CBS National News, Forbes, USA Today, Essence Magazine, and all of that started because two people decided to be mean girls. So uh, shout out to them. I'm living good because of them. Thanks. Wow. So that right there was like, that was like a blessing in disguise, you know? It really was. Like my courses have been featured in Forbes and, you know, it's like... I went from being stranded on vacation to creating a movement of Mm. 11,000 women who are sick of waiting on other people in order to see the world. And they were just looking for the confidence to do it. And the thing is, it's really scary to be the first, right? You know, and for me, since I was the first, it wasn't trendy to be a solo traveler Mm. yet. You get what I'm saying? So I think by me getting stranded on vacation, I was the first and then people could actually see Mm -hmm. like okay you know what it's not so scary okay it can be safe to do it and i'm not saying that i'm the first woman to solo travel in the world but for black women i was really one of the first in 2018 for Mm -hmm. you know to be featured in all these different major publications for solo travel Mm -hmm. so i'm happy it happened you want to know what's so crazy when you told your story it's like it kind of remind me of this story where these girls where they went to Mexico. Shanquella Robinson. She died. Shanquella. Because I'm guessing of envy. So I'm glad that they actually left because it probably could have went a little bit different. You Y'all want to know something so crazy? What? Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Shanquella. What's so crazy is that how I found out about the Shanquella Robinson story is because, okay, so on Instagram I have 130,000 followers you know I have a community of women who want to solo travel and who are committed to that right Mm -hmm. so girls started DMing me on Instagram like oh my god did you see this story about this girl named Shanquella the same thing almost happened to you and she was following you before she died and I was like what so I go Mm -hmm. on Shanquella's page and sure enough she's following me Wow. I don't I'm like she probably for the same reasons that I didn't want to travel with girls anymore. I felt like girls was flaking on vacation. I don't know if she was following me before the the Cabo trip or if she started following me during the Cabo trip, but people were reaching out to me saying th- they tried to slide on her pretty much like what they were doing to you. Like they tried to flake on her on the trip mm. and she was following you. So I'm like, oh my gosh, Shanquella was following me at the time yeah. of her death. Like was she trying to get out of there? Like, you yeah. know, it's just... It's yeah, just weird. Rest it, in peace. It's, it's it's crazy because like like you said, like girl a lot of girls deal with this. Like they deal with it and then instead of them kinda like, you know, doing what you did and you actually came up with a solution to the problem and you documented it for other people, they go and they find other groups. And then right. it's like other groups and then it's other groups. They never wanna take that risk of going out and solo traveling. So, you know, her her situation was a really sad one, but it, it you know, it definitely shed a light on, like, you know, being able to go out and travel by yourself and not with people that, you know, you really don't like. Right. You know? It's kind of crazy. It is. Yeah. It brings chills, you know? Like, just, yeah. That's crazy. Like, her story was, like, globally known at this point. You right. Know? Like, just a vacation and then you end up dying from some friends. Right. You know, I think they got into a fight or whatever, but it's kind of crazy you know? it is yeah. wow which, which countries broke the ice for you like solo um so uh i did paris france as mm. my first solo trip and the thing is if you are a woman or even a man doing your first solo trip i definitely recommend starting out with a country on your bucket list that's super touristy mm-hmm. because 
if you're going somewhere for the first time and you're by yourself, you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. But yeah. if everybody else is a tourist that's there, mm -hmm. you don't feel that it's all eyes on you, right? Yeah. So yeah. I was like, you know what? Um, I wanted to go to Dubai. I wanted to go to Australia. And I wanted to go to Paris. And I said, you know what? If I go to Paris, everybody there wants to see the Eiffel Tower. Everybody there is a tourist. Yeah. I'm not, you know, I, I sure. won't catch someone's eye more than any other black girl walking down the street because there's so many it's so crowded you know yeah. so i figured the more crowded the more cameras the more eyes the more you know so i mm. did the most touristy place for my first solo trip what's going on my motion and success family sorry to break the interview but i had to i just wanted to share some information with you guys because i know there is a problem a lot of people out here they're struggling with their credit they're struggling to get funding they're struggling to close a real estate deal they're struggling to go ahead and increase their credit score they're struggling to remove inquiries off your profile i have the solution for you so now what i went ahead and did was i created an ai power software that you can use to go out and repair your own credit not only your credit but you're also your family members credit if you wanted to so the name of the system is called m2magnate.com this is an AI power software that you can use that will generate all the letters for you in less than five minutes. And you can send out your letters throughout the software to get the results. This is the same exact system that's responsible for helping me remove negative items off my client's credit profile, my credit profile. And this is what's going to help you to get that 700 plus credit score without having to pay thousands of dollars. Go ahead and visit m2magnate.com and start working on your credit. See you guys inside the software. And uh, it was Paris, France. And to be honest, Ayo, I was just walking around like I was like the shiznit because I'm like, oh, I did it. You see those yeah. girls, you know, they left me, but I didn't just stay home yeah. and never do anything again. I did it on my own. And, you know, I got so confident that I decided on like day four of me being in Paris. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a 30 minute flight over to London since I'm uh. over here because I'm just really <laughs> feeling myself. It's 30 minutes away. Yeah. I'm already over here. The the uh, the flight is only $27 on EasyJet. When mm. is it ever going to be $27 to go to mm. London again? Okay, one night only up from out of yeah. town kind of situation, you know? Yeah. So I was like, yo, I'm just going to do it. So I came home, two countries in on my first solo uh. trip, and I was like, you know what? All right, I'm ready. So it's just been me and my passport and, you know, 11,000 women behind me. And mm. a bunch of stamps. How many passports yeah. do you have now? Did you run uh, through I'm on my one? second. I'm on my second passport. Mm. So um, I'll be on my third one probably uh, within the next few months. Wow. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Wow. That is crazy. Um, so, so first things first, I definitely want to find out how do you fly for free? Because I kind of get the gist, but I know you're well tapped in, right? Yeah. So I know, like, I'm pretty sure you got the credit card rewards points and all of that stuff. But what's your method of, like, traveling for free? Yeah, so there's a few different ways how people can travel for free. And, you know... You know, Cody, I'm really happy that you mentioned the word credit card yeah. because a lot of people yeah. think that if you are traveling the world for free, that you must be using credit cards. But... Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to use credit cards, right? Really? So, yeah. So, here's a few things, right? First thing is most people don't know this, but you can actually get free flights and free hotel stays by doing surveys, right? So, um, so that's where you're filling out questionnaires. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if you Google United Airlines free surveys um i think the website is opinionsformiles.com wow. where united will actually give you free miles just for filling out surveys so wow. i always tell people if you're bored and you scroll on tiktok set an alarm every sunday for four hours just fill out surveys also um hilton honors they have a reward system as well it's called guest rewards opinions mm -hmm. so guest rewards opinions.com will give you free hilton honors bonus points whenever you fill out surveys so it's like 
when people, when I tell people like, hey, you can travel for free and you don't have to pay cash. No, just invest your time. Fill out surveys. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, that's just like one of the ways that you can travel. Um, Another way that you can travel the world is make sure that instead of going into a store to purchase something like let's say you want to get some Fenty foundation and you want to go to Sephora. Right. Instead of walking into Sephora or going on Sephora dot com. We are going to go to our closest airlines shopping portal. Mm. Most people don't know that these airlines have shopping portals. So Delta Airlines has a shopping portal. If you go on Google.com, Google this, y'all. I'm giving y'all some game, okay? If you go on Google.com right now and just put in American Airlines shopping portal, boom, you get five miles per dollar for shopping at Sephora. How many years have you been going to Sephora and getting the same NARS concealer, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Um, You get three miles per dollar every time you shop at Walmart. How many years have you been shopping at Walmart and you could have been earning three miles per dollar, five miles per dollar? Right. Sounds like a few trips to me. Exactly. Ground like trips, actually. You already need toothpaste, soap, all these things from Walmart, right? So that's three miles per dollar for how many years have you been shopping at Walmart? Right? So it's exactly. like there's so many different ways, like um with my Lyft account, right? Especially like for big city people. Right. Yeah. If you're in a big city like New York or Philly, Chicago, whatever, mm-hmm. let's say you don't own a car because you take rideshare everywhere. Well, you can connect your Lyft account to your Delta Sky Miles account and you can earn free miles on Delta every time you take your Lyft. Ooh. Right? So you actually didn't Hilton have to too, pay. Right? Isn't it Hilton too? And Hilton yeah. as well. Yeah. Right. So yeah. um, you connect your Lyft account to Hilton Honors and you get free Hilton Honors bonus points. Mm. So Jeez. when I tell people like, oh, you can travel the world for free, you were already going to use that ride share. Right. Exactly. Sunday, fun day in Houston. You know, nobody's <laughs> driving. We yeah. were already going to use the lift. Right. How many boxes of Dove soap can I buy from Walmart? Three miles per dollar. Q-tips, mm-hmm. toothpaste, all of those things. Right. So it's like you want a Balenciaga sweater from Neiman Marcus. Go to your nearest airline shopping portal. If they're giving 12 miles per dollar at Neiman Marcus and this Givenchy jacket is $3,000, how many miles is that, right? So Mm -hmm. you actually don't have to pay cash or save up money or anything. Um, You just got to know. It's one of those, like, if you know, you know kind of things, you know? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. You know what's so crazy? Like, now that you're, like, breaking all these different ways down. Yeah. Like... You kind of got like a two for one special, especially <laughs> if you got some good credit cards too. So now, yeah. you, let's say for example, you got the Chase credit card. Right now, you got the Chase credit card. You getting points just off the spend, and you inside the portal, and you're ordering. So now you're building points with Delta, and you got Chase points. So you got a two for one special. You know? No, yeah, like when you talk about double dipping, yeah. that's totally my lane. So you know how Hilton Honors connects to Lyft. But with Lyft, if you pay with a Chase Sapphire Reserve card, you get 10 times the points. You get two miles on Delta Airlines per dollar um, that you spend with Lyft. So Mm -hmm. if your ride was $40, you're getting 80 miles with Lyft. But then you're getting 10 times the points if if your payment method is Chase. So Mm -hmm. 80 miles with Delta if the Lyft ride was $40. But then you get 400 points with Chase if you pay with a Chase Sapphire Reserve. So it's like double dipping. I'm telling you, like I'm about that life. Damn, mm. I, I need to get I need to get on this wave because honestly, yeah. like I see myself using all of these things you're talking about. Like I'm going, I'm getting Ubers, I'm getting lifts, and I'm not even thinking in terms of miles when I'm getting them. Right, yeah. I'm telling you. So I'm you. saying here, I could have got like free flights this whole time. Yeah, bro, them, th- them things <laughs> add up. <laughs> they bro. add up. They, they add definitely up. do. I'm telling you. Yeah, that's crazy. Wow. So like, so you basically gave two ways. Like you gave. If you got the credit cards, and you also gave, if you have time on your hands. You got the surveys. You got the surveys. Do the surveys, airline shopping portals. Damn. It's it's so much. I'm telling you, there is always a way that you can travel the world without actually draining your bank account. Mm, That is crazy. Mm. And and, and the thing is that, I'm not even going to lie, like, people go on social media, and they do see a lot of these girls traveling. And they got a whole, they got a whole like their own opinions, like yeah, you know, maybe they got the, the sugar daddy hiding <laughs> in the back. They're not putting him inside the the, the you know, they take a picture of the food tray yeah, and then it's right. like half, yeah, and then it's like you know, <laughs> that's what people gonna automatically assume, but they don't know it's like so many methods 
to actually flying for free, especially even for women. Yeah. Like, so that's crazy. So you're really putting them on a lot of game. I'm telling you guys, like, um, for all of the people who take Uber, Uber actually has a partnership with Marriott. So if you go inside of your Uber app mm. right now, go inside your Uber app, hit the uh, tab at the bottom that says account. Then from there, go to settings. Mm. Scroll to the bottom where it says rewards. Inside of your Uber settings, you can link your Marriott Bonvoy account to your Uber. So if you mm. take Uber, then you get uh, two Marriott Bonvoy points. If you order Uber Eats to your house, then you get three Marriott Bonvoy mm. points. How many years have you been ordering Uber Eats every time you get snowed in the house or it rains too much? This whole time, yep. that could have been free stays at Marriott. Mm. Right. I'm telling you. So there for everything you want to do, whether it's getting necessities for yourself or, you know, whether it's, you know, using your time to get free flights or every time you eat dinner or dine out, that should convert into a free flight as well. So I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be a, a sugar daddy in the background, but <laughs> it's, it's definitely yeah. one of those. If you know, you know. Yeah. So so how to efficiently use those points, because sometimes you might see a flight. From because I might know, like, all right, cool. A flight from here, let's say from New York to Atlanta, it's probably about like I'd say a good flight is under 10,000 points from here to Atlanta. So that's reasonable. How do you know, like, if it's efficient to use the points versus cash? I think that's a really great question. So, one of the things that I do is I look up the dates and select redeem miles mm -hmm. when they give me the price conversion the point conversion so let's say we want to go from new york to atlanta and it says eight thousand points i'll hit the calendar button or for united it might say 30 day calendar um every website looks different but typically there will be a calendar next to the date that you selected click the calendar and look for any dates highlighted in green so if it's six thousand to go if i wait a week i'm going for that six thousand because then i can save those four thousand points and go somewhere else mm. Good. Yeah, so definitely utilize that calendar to see, okay, this is the cheapest time with the points for me to go to Japan. So I'll go this time instead of this time. Mm. That is, wow. that's, that's crazy, bro. This, that's, a, that's a lot of game. I'm sitting here like, oh, damn. And so many different ways to travel the world really for free. Is. You know what's so crazy? Like when I learned like this stuff, like that you're saying right now. Yeah. It's probably been about two years since I've actually paid for a flight, like seriously. Yeah, you see, like, so you seriously. see, so you like, see how easy it is. Like, yeah, cause like first things first, you got the, the credit card sign on bonus. Like yeah. that can last you at least a year or two. If you yeah, have depending, multiple right. credit cards, now we're talking about probably one or two or three years. You yeah. Know, because it's signing on. You're getting over 100,000 plus points. I love it. Just from one credit card. Right. So that'd be lasting me. Like, I done went to Vegas back and forth. Exactly. Like twice. Uh, Florida a few times. Like, it's so many places that I've been. Right. Where I've used points. Right. Where I haven't actually paid for cash. So, like, you spend a game for sure, for sure. That's yeah. Like I like that. I'm telling you, it's um, it's so many different ways to travel the world and don't have to pay for it. Like, for instance, Basque Bank. Basque Bank um, actually has a partnership with American Airlines that for mm. every single dollar that you save in a savings account with them, they will give you 2.5 miles mm. on American Airlines per dollar that you save. Mm. So you don't even got to spend. Wow. So surveys, mm. depending on who you bank with. Most banks don't tell you whether or not they have a partnership with an airline. So it's really important to just make sure that you're always putting yourself in these positions where you can have access to that information, you know? So definitely informational podcasts like these, yeah. places like these to hang out are definitely, you know, good scenarios for us. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's yeah, nice. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's real good stuff. I ain't gonna lie. That's real good. That's like I'm sitting here. I'm like, damn, I'm taking, I'm taking note. Mind of blown. Yeah, yeah, for sure, <laughs> definitely yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Real, real mind blown. But let's let's jump into your community. You say you got over eleven thousand 
members in your community? Yeah. How so did you accumulate so much people in a community? I mean, honestly, it, it all started by accident. I got stranded on vacation in the middle of the night mm-hmm. in Amsterdam on my birthday. I'm not thinking that that is going to turn into $1.5 million and 11,000 people helped. It was just me being genuine about, hey, this is what happened to me. I'm a one-woman band. And at my big age, I'm dealing with the fact that I'm not comfortable in my own skin, Mm -hmm. right? Like, most people don't solo travel because they're like, yo, it ain't going to be lit if I'm by myself. Or is it going to be safe, you know, if I decide, you know, to travel by myself? Mm -hmm. And I was definitely one of those girls that I, I was like, well... I don't really want to solo travel, but anything is better than having a fallout with anybody on vacation. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather just do this myself, you know? Right. But, you know, I'm happy of where it is now. That's Mm. dope. Nah, that's, that's, that's crazy. So in the community, like, basically, like, it's going to be, it's it's like a lot of women who are solo traveling. Yeah. And do they kind of, like, share each other's stories? Like, you know... I went here, I went, you know, I went there, safety tips and things like that. Like you guys, or y'all jump into that as well? Yeah, so uh, my course is a nine-week blueprint of how to ace your first solo trip and also how to travel the world without draining your bank account, right? So kind of some of the methods that we talked about earlier. In addition to that, they get daily FaceTime calls on their first solo trip and each person gets one hour a week with me throughout the nine weeks that they take their course, um, throughout the nine weeks that they're taking their course. So that way it's super immersive, it's super intimate, and then they get that support when they go on their first solo trip, you know? So it's a whole big to do and time investment for me and the client mm, i mean you, you you helping them overcome that hurdle you know of, yeah of traveling so what so so for the women who are watching like what's some countries that you would you would recommend for solo travel for women facts yeah so um if you're taking your very first solo trip number one antigua and barbuda um Number two, I would definitely say St. Lucia was absolutely amazing. Um, I'd say for number three, Santorini or Mykonos uh, in Greece. Um, I would definitely say, unpopular opinion, but the Maldives and Bora Bora have been absolutely amazing. I know some people um, have said to me, like, why would you go to Bora Bora by yourself? Mm. And I'm like, well, what if the guy that I'm supposed supposed to be here with is like dead already and his mother hasn't been born or what if he hasn't even been born yet like so i'm supposed to wait like man or woman i'm not going to discriminate i'm going if i want to see something because like what if i die in a plane crash tomorrow or like what if you just don't wake up or what if you know what's it's just anything so i'm so i'm gonna be in heaven looking down like ah damn i didn't get a chance to do that because Mm -hmm. um you know Io couldn't go with me, so I had to wait. Like, no, no, I'm going to see it now. Tomorrow is not promised. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Honestly, I do remember myself, too. Like, I think when I first got my passport, I went and I took a solo trip to um, Tulum. Tulum, I love this for you. Tulum, yeah. Yeah, Tulum. And that it was a dope experience. Like at first, I'm like I was a little bit anxious. I'm like, yo, my wild. I'm like, you know, people telling me about the cartels, you know, certain right. things, and, right. and I'm like, you know, I ain't trying to really hear that because I'm like, yo, I just want to go. Just got right. my passport. I need to, you know, get out of here. But it was it wasn't a bad experience. So I, you know, I, I see exactly what you mean. It's not as bad as people would think. Right. You know, I'm you still could you. have fun. Still could turn up. You know. So I love to learn. Yeah, it's, it's really nice over there. Very, like, boho jungle vibes. Yeah. Like... Nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so like, how about, like, when you're going to countries that doesn't speak English? What, how do you navigate through those countries? What do you oh, do? super easy. Um, so, one of the things that, that a lot of people think is that when you go to these other countries that you're going to have a hard time communicating. I've been to Kuwait and didn't even have a hard time communicating. I've been to Saudi Arabia (laughs) and didn't have a hard time communicating. Um, As long as you have an app like Google Translate on your phone, I think you'll be okay. But just remember, most people love that almighty dollar. So they're going to learn how to communicate with you because every country... If they have an airport, then Mm -hmm. they have Americans besides like North Korea that 
actually visit there. So they're depending on doing some type of business with you. There's mm-hmm. always some tourist center. There's always something. So you'll be fine. Google Translate. <laughs> and then how about like the phones? Do you have? Is there a way where you buy a chip? Like, what do you do? Like, is there an yeah. app you download for service? Yeah. So, um, I have WhatsApp that works in every country. Um, uh-huh. I also have this app on my phone. It's called Text Now. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, with yeah. Text Now, as long as I have data, Wi-Fi at my hotel or whatever, um, I'm always good to communicate. Also, um, if you get one of these mobile Wi-Fi hotspots, mine's is the uh, Wi-Fi Soli Skyroam. Mm-hmm. It's like a mobile Wi-Fi. Wi Fi mm. hotspot de- device, and I take it with me. I carry it in my purse. I take it with me everywhere I go. So that way, even when I'm not at the hotel, yeah. I still have Wi Fi as I'm walking, like throughout yeah. Paris or whatever. Because mm. the reason why I asked that question, I remember one time I went to the UK, um, yeah. to London, and me and my friend, we was out in the trenches, I say. Really? And we didn't have no phone. We trying to contact because we knew somebody else where he was staying in this Airbnb. And we're walking in like a foreign town, yeah, foreign country. Um, both of us don't have any service on our phone, and we're trying to call and be like, "Yo, what's the actual address we're going to?" Right. We didn't have any service, so like that was probably like one of the nerve wracking parts of our trip, uh... you know, because like we didn't have any service, any Wi Fi. I'm like, hmm. Imagine if we're just out here, we don't find any Wi Fi to call him. You know, to oh, find out wow. the actual address. So I yeah. think having a hotspot like that would definitely change the game for sure. Yeah, and definitely WhatsApp. Like, make sure that you guys download mm-hmm. WhatsApp because yeah. even if you can't call, like, from your cellular data, mm-hmm. um, if you, like, see, like, a restaurant, maybe just go in and buy, buy like, a soda or something and, be, and just use the Wi-Fi yeah. and, you know, talk to somebody on WhatsApp. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> how do you... When you when you are traveling solo, you know the locals and and things like that in the in the countries. Once they see you're American, like they're thinking about how they could get a dollar from you. So how do you handle situations like that? You know, not getting scammed, not getting you know people thinking you got money on you, or you know thinking that you're a lick or something. Like how how do you <laughs> <laughs> how do you kind of like the police too? Yeah, even the police too. In some places yeah. too, they all want. They're trying to extort you and things like that. How do you handle stuff like that when you travel out? That's a pretty good question because, like, a lot of women, they always ask me about safety, right? Um, So two things that I do. The first thing that I do is uh, the United States actually has a free service for U.S. citizens traveling abroad. It's called the Smart Traveler Enrollment Program. It's called the STEP program. So you can actually type up your itinerary and upload it um, to the nearest U.S. embassy in whatever country that you're visiting. Mm. So that's like safety tip number one. Mm. Also, what you can do is if you actually Google like U.S. Embassy Zambia, you can email them directly. Remember, the people Mm. who work at the U.S. Embassy in these countries are U.S. citizens representing Mm. the United States. And they are there in case of an emergency in that particular country to assist Mm. U.S. citizens in that particular country. They're there to serve you. They're American just like you are. So you can email them and say, like, hey, you know, um, I'm coming here. I'll be staying at the Radisson. What places should I avoid? What are some local scams? So that way when I'm not at the pool by the Radisson and I decide to leave, Mm. how do I know what to look out for? Mm, That's key. Yeah. That's that's super important. And do you recommend, like, let's say, you know, some people, they want to go on an adventure. Even when they're solo, they want to go out, step out the resort, want to go out and and, and take photographs in certain areas that they're probably not supposed to. Um, Do you think, like, they can do it safely, like, in a safe way? Yeah, I think it can be done safely because... If you go on my Instagram, like, I I definitely like to enjoy myself. So I'd say this. If you want to do anything outside the resort, depending on where you are, if you're in Paris, I mean, my safety uh, radar isn't that high because Mm -hmm. Paris has so many tourists. Tourists, I know that there's so many cameras everywhere. So, you know, not really concerned. Um, But let's say you're in a 
Zanzibar uh, in East Africa, which I felt pretty safe in Zanzibar. But, you know, let's say you're in, I don't know, because I felt safe in a lot of places that people say that I wouldn't feel safe. I went to Dubai solo at least five times. I love Dubai. And there is an entire community of black people in Dubai, black Americans. Mm. They have their own little Facebook group. And a couple of my girlfriends um, left New Jersey to go teach English to kids in Dubai. And they pay for their um, their uh housing and everything so yeah dubai has actually like people who do boho braids everything it's a whole vibe but um i say all that to say so many places get a bad rap for being unsafe and it's totally not like that so um i just say uh use your common sense you know but um definitely make sure that you know the emergency number abroad in America, it's nine one one, but like sometimes. in London, to call nine one one would be two two two, right? So yeah. most people wouldn't know that in Bali, yeah. it's nine nine nine. So like literally, people say, "Well, what am I going to do if I have an emergency?" But they don't even know the number to call in case of an emergency. Mm. So you know, just just you know, eighty seven countries, and I'm I'm kind of like thinking of all those things. Wow, that's a gem right there. Like, if I'm standing, I probably would have did one one nine nine one one. Right, I like I would have did something, but I probably wouldn't get anybody. <laughs> that's that's good. That's crazy. That's good. So now I got two questions now. So now, um, I think you know, eighty seven plus countries in at this point. Um, you know, you said safety was one of the things, you know, that, that, that you realize is not too much of a, not necessarily a big deal, but like, it's not really something you should worry about too, too much. So now like, what country would you actually relocate to? Like, like, you know, like actually living. Cause I know America is actually, you know, people say it's probably one of the most safest countries, but you know, the president is not even safe in his own skin, you know? <laughs> Um, like what's one mm -hmm. country you actually relocate to where you've seen their politics, their politics looks good. Um, taxes, you're not paying as much taxes, religion, religion is good. What's one of the countries that stood out to you? Like out of all of those countries that you, you don't mind growing a family out? Well, I think my answer is going to be, um, bias. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm going to say Antigua and Barbuda because... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's my home country so mm -hmm. I would say Antigua and Barbuda and I've been living back in Antigua and Barbuda um, for the past five years full time wow. mm -hmm. so I would say Antigua and Barbuda and I've had enough experience living in the United States to be yeah. able to say what, it, hmm. what it's like otherwise um, so yeah I would say my home country Antigua Barbuda mm -hmm. okay are you like <clears throat> while you're out there are you like making any investments out there like buying up land and doing different things out there yeah so it's really crazy that you guys asked me that so um i joined uh this school community right um so this guy his name was charles noonan i joined his school community and i saw some reels about this guy and it said um hey you can buy land for three thousand um three hundred dollars and you can buy properties for a thousand dollars and i was like okay well let me try it out mm -hmm. so i ended up buying a place in Detroit for a thousand dollars after I purchased his school membership and from there I was like okay so now I've actually bought land in Antigua but it all started with me actually buying a property in Detroit mm. so actually yeah I just made my first investment last Friday mm. in Antigua yeah congratulations yeah, wow. thank yeah, you wow. nice yeah we definitely we had Charles on the show he, he, he's Shout a real deal when it comes to the, to yeah. the land, to the land yeah. <laughs> But now nah, that's what's up. That's what's up. And you plan on, on a further expanding that portfolio? I do. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Mm. That's what's mm. up. That's what's up. And like for men, like, you know, a lot of men do want to travel solo. Right. Where would you recommend men to go? Like, let's say you want to take a solo trip without the guys or without, you know, if you got a girl, without a girl. Like, you just want to get a peace of mind, probably even meet some other people. Where, where would you recommend for guys to start off with? Antigua and Barbuda, <laughs> of course, my home country. Um, what other places have been a vibe? Um, I feel like Albania is like a low-key vibe. Mm. Um, 
I feel like uh, Mykonos, Greece. I mean, everybody knows Mykonos. It's like the mm-hmm. number one party place. Um, but also, if you guys island hop while you're in Greece, go to Eos. Mm. Blow your mind. Mm. The amount of partying. Um, I definitely would say I had a great time. Like, if uh, if it's a guy, I would say, like, Tulum is definitely one of those places where, like, you can mm. meet people, meet other Americans. You're still not too far from home, you know. So um, those are the places off the top that I'm, mm. like, guys would like. It's not too honeymoonish or girly, yeah. you know. Mm. And you say you've been, you, you've been to 87 countries. Any places, like, you wouldn't recommend, like, especially for, like, you know, Colored people, dark skinned people, you know, people like us. Because a lot of times you go on TikTok. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm one of those people too. I travel and I'll be like, where's a safe place, you know, for black people to for travel? For black people. You know, yeah. like you always see that recommendation on TikTok. Because some people, that's the first thing they, they go to. Like they want to find out what place is safe for me to go, you know? It's crazy. I'm going to tell you something crazy. Are you ready to hear this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have heard that people go to Italy and that is so racist. Uh, and yeah. I went to Italy and had the complete opposite experience. I ended up going to Italy with a friend. And every restaurant that I went into, I was in this town called Minori. Uh, um, and every restaurant that I went into, they would always say, a bottle of champagne. And then uh, there would always be like some guy in the back who waves. <laughs> and so by the third night, yeah. I, w- I asked the waiter, I was like, do they think I'm like... A prostitute because why are they keep giving me alcohol free yeah. every restaurant free champagne every restaurant every restaurant this is starting to get a little creepy and the waiter spoke english and he was like no it's just that you black girl and we don't we don't always have you in the restaurant mm. so to us you are exotic versus i've heard people say oh i went to italy and people were so rude they were so racist and i went to paris and they were so racist and so rude and i'm like I mm. got red carpet treatment. Mm. So I I can't Crazy. say that there are too many places that I'm like, ah, I would not go there. Because I felt like I was always so accepted um, mm. mostly, mostly everywhere, you know. So um, I don't have any don't go, don't avoid places. That's good. So now I've heard stories where they got something called passport bros, right? Where oh, they go to yeah. places like Columbia, DR, you know, for the women specifically. Um, so like what's one kind like what's a, like and then also there's people where they go out of country to find their their actual love. Okay. So like wh- what's a country you would actually recommend for a person, either guy or a girl to go out and find their 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 mate, their partner, their person to be like any any country that stood out where you actually find some love out there? Um, yes, there like is. Like legitimate love without No, legitimate love. Attached. Yeah, legitimate love. I spent a week in Geneva, Switzerland, mm-hmm. and I had never gotten so much men trying to talk to me in my life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like usually guys don't really come up to me and like talk to me. Um, usually like somebody will like shoot me a DM or something, but like if I'm like out dining or something, like nobody really comes over and like shoots their shot in person. What do you think it is though? I have no idea. (laughs) (laughs) But guys usually don't come up and talk to me. If I meet a guy, it's usually through someone else Mm -hmm. or um, maybe a guy might slide in my DMs, but I never actually meet guys in person Mm -hmm. on vacation. Um, And when I was in Geneva, Switzerland for a week, men were constantly coming up to me like, I'm sorry, miss, are you sitting alone? Nice men wearing nice watches, smell nice, nice suits. Mm. Every single where that I went in Geneva, men were stopping what they were doing to ask me if I just needed help walking down the street. So I went home and I told all my girlfriends, like, girl, if you're looking for a man, you need to be in Geneva, Switzerland, honey. Because the men in Geneva, Switzerland, they shoot their shot. I was sitting at a park next to a fountain. A man sat down next to me. He was like, you are very beautiful. I went to the Intercontinental and I went up to the top floor to just, you know, have some hibachi. And this man came up next to me. He was like, are you sitting alone? Like, Every single where that I went mm. on the train, everything I couldn't believe it. Geneva, Switzerland, <laughs> y'all. That's that's where the nice men with the nice suits and nice watches. That's where they were shooting their shot with me. So when you're ready to settle down, you know exactly where to go. Geneva, ladies. Switzerland. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, how about the how about the guys? I mean, it's almost easy for guys. I can't really speak for guys. Where where should they go? Because I'm not a guy, you know? So I I can't tell you where the girls are. But, you know, where the guys are, they were shooting their shot and and looked actually really nice. Mm. Geneva, Switzerland. Mm. Mm. But that right there there tells you, too, because it's like sometimes when people are dating, like, your environment is is a a factor. Because some people, you know, they get stuck. They feel like, oh, in New York, you mean the same? Because... If you're from like a city, most of, most of the times people are acting the same. Like it's like you meet right. the same person like twenty times. Right. So once you get that passport, you could go out and expand right. <laughs> and meet a whole bunch of other people. Like yeah, but definitely, I see it. I I see I see why people do. They they I see the passport bro movement. I even see yeah. the passport sis movement. You know, passport sis movement. I never yeah. heard that. No. You but never heard but I have nothing. Uh, but my movement has nothing to do with like yeah. meeting oh, yeah, anyone. No, 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 no. Or, <laughs> I'm not meeting uh, anyone. I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just traveling solo. I'm not meeting up, yeah, up with not, anybody not, not. or anything. That, you're, the, you're the passport abuser. Yeah. <laughs> So how about like dual citizenship? Have you ever considered that before? You yeah, it's antique? actually a process that I'm going through mm-hmm. right now. Um, so, mm. yeah. I definitely would encourage it, especially because with the instability of America politically, you just never know when you'll kind of need to just yeah like Chuck the deuces and yeah. just not show that you're American, but show something else. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like I have been, I went to Tunisia, and they were like, "Where are you from?" And I said, "Antigua." And they were like, oh, I thought you were going to say that you were American because, you know, <laughs> you're president, <laughs> you know. So it's like people don't take America very seriously. So, mm-hmm. you know, imagine if there was to be a war or something like that. It's always good to have another yeah. passport in your mm-hmm. pocket. Wow. That's a, That's a fact. So how about like safe because your family's from there. Like what would be the, the process of getting that started? Like, Yeah. So you just have to show your ancestry to the country and you have to get those documents attested. And um, mm. they want to see how often you've been in and out the country. And they do like a background check on you and all those other things. Mm. Yes. Long and boring answer. But yeah. Okay. I agree with you. I feel like everybody should have like you know uh, uh, two passports because, like you said, a lot of things are going on and you you don't want to be stuck in one place. You know. Yeah. But one thing I do want to jump in. You did mention earlier. You said you made one point five million. Like shortly yeah. after that whole drama. Yeah, it's crazy. How? how like how? How did you get to one point five million? Like, how did that? How did that happen? It was it was crazy. So um, I started this course. Right. And women were reaching out to me on Instagram like, oh, my God, I see that you're always traveling and you're always safe. Like, how are you able to do this? And I'm like, well, I can show you like my little five subject notebook. And Mm -hmm. I was just basically like, you know, helping women do it. A girl ended up calling me back six months later and she said, hey. I work for Forbes and I've actually been traveling and doing everything that you've taught me and I want to write an article about you. Uh So from there, it was just like once the Forbes article came out, I got USA Today. Mm. I got Essence Magazine. You know, I got CNN. All of these things started to happen off of one article. So it just it took place so organically, you know. Wow. that That's crazy. But that that shows that what you were doing, like you was really. Like, you were really impacting people and really, like, the movement you started, like, a lot of people was waiting for it. They was just waiting for somebody to I think to it was divine up. timing, yeah. 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 Do the ladies in your community do, like, do they have girl trips? Yeah, like, so we do girl trips three times a year. Because mm. it's a good way for everybody in the community to meet up with each other. Yeah. And then it's a good way for them to meet up with me. A lot of the women that come to me for one-on-one mentorship to take their first solo trip, usually they're like, yo, I just had a breakup and he never wanted to travel. Or, you know what, I just had the worst birthday trip ever. So, you know, what? I'm just going to do this by myself now. Mm. Or some women's like, you know what, I just lost weight. I just just retired i just you know so they're usually at this fork in the road where there's a huge Mm -hmm. transformation for them and the way that they want to express that 2.0 version of themselves Mm. is through travel Mm. wow 
What's some of the professions you usually get like outside of like um I have women honestly from all walks of life. Like, you know, like that customer that came to me but never told me that she was a freelance writer for Forbes. Mm -hmm. Right? So I get a little bit of everything. And you know, I'm really grateful because by me meeting her and not knowing what her role was or who she was in real life or how she could actually contribute to the trajectory of my life and of my business. I learned very early in business. You never know who your customers are. Mm. So you respect people at all times. Mm. You know, what if I would have had an attitude that day or what if I would have rescheduled and she would have said, you know what? Um, I, I don't even want the course anymore or, you know, just whatever. You just never know whose money you're taking. So make sure that, you know, you're not just meeting people's expectations, but that you're exceeding them. Make sure that you're an ethical business owner, you know, um, make sure that every single morning when you wake up, you know that you want to be of service mm -hmm. because that's more love that you're pouring into whatever products that you're creating for people. Mm -hmm. That's going to equal a bigger impact. The 1.5 million is only a byproduct of how good yeah. I am at serving people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's pretty much how I got there through service. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Like that's, that. that's amazing right there. And, like, do you, do you have any um, other countries that you got on your list? Like, any countries that you haven't oh. been to? Well, there's 195, and I'm at 87. So, yeah. still so <laughs> many more that I just haven't seen, you know. But... Hopefully, you know, I get to country 100 really soon. Wow. I have 12 countries left, so. Wow. About when you're thinking about the, by midway of 2025? Yeah, hopefully. Let's just, let's just see what mm. the man upstairs has for me. Mm. Mm. Nice. This was a really good conversation, bro. Yeah, was. thank you guys Howdy for day. having me on. Before you do go, I actually want to ask you this last question. Ask me. Actually, two questions. Ask How away. do you plan out your itineraries? Like from Monday to Sunday, like w like how do you plan out your days so that way you're not just going and you're not, you're just not laying on the beach every day? You know? Yeah, that's a great question, Cody. So one of the things that I do is go on Airbnb.com, mm -hmm. but instead of selecting stays, select experiences. Because right. when you select experiences, let's say you're in Johannesburg, you can learn to speak Swahili or Zulu. Then from there, you do a Nelson Mandela tour. Then later on that night, you might do something else. So instead of worrying about getting bored or being stuck in a hotel room, either email the hotel before you get there and say, what tours do you guys offer? Or um, I'm going to do some Airbnb tours, but I want my driver to be directly from the hotel. Mm. That way... I know that it's not just Uber taking me. He works with y'all. So if he left with me and don't come back with me, that's going to be a little bit suspicious. Plus, the U.S. Embassy already knows, based on the itinerary that I gave them, who the driver is. Mm. My Airbnb experiences, the tours were booked ahead of time. Method of transportation is typed into the itinerary. So they already know to look for him. <laughs> the U.S. Embassy, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I go on Airbnb.com, and you don't need to actually be staying at an Airbnb to utilize the experiences tab. Mm -hmm. So if you're in Cartagena, wake up in the morning, go for a tour of Old Town, then um, from there, uh, maybe do a salsa class, then from there, um, mm -hmm. learn to do paddle boarding on the beach in Cartagena. Then, you know, mm -hmm. go back to your room. Or maybe you might book a via tour in Cartagena for 10 a.m. where a party bus picks you up from your hotel, mm -hmm. right? And you can put copy and paste all the links from the experiences on via tour and Airbnb experiences, yeah. copy and paste the links into the itinerary and send it to the U.S. Embassy. So that way, even the tours that you did or whatever, all of that stuff is traceable. Mm. So, yeah, mm. that's how you can avoid being bored, but also still be safe, safe. you yeah. know? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. Because one of the, like, kind of like, it reminds me of this movie called Taken, you know, where yeah. this lady, she went to, I think, Paris, Paris or France, and she never came back home, you know? But, but that, that helps out a lot, though. It, yeah. It, 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 it eases the pressure, you know? Yeah. So. I think um, a lot of people say that, like, oh, I've seen Taken, but I want us to consider everything that this character did wrong. OK, so first yeah. of all, the U.S. Embassy didn't know where she was. Her father didn't even know that she would be backpacking around Europe. So um, nobody even knew where this person was going. Um, also, she got into a car with a stranger 
and shared a cab with him at the airport. Remember, they met at the airport. They took a cab together, yeah. and she got dropped off first. So he already knew where she w- w- was staying. He already knew yeah. how to come back and find her and her friend. So, I mean, I hope that um, anybody who takes a solo trip that they would uh, be a little bit more on high alert than to mm-hmm. let someone who meets them at an airport yeah share the same taxi as them and let them see where to find her mm-hmm. right so let's kind of think about how that got started but yeah. but but some people they do when they're on vacation they're all happy you know they're not moving with a chip on their shoulder you know because if you seen like based on that movie like he was he seemed like he was super friendly being kind that's you why you gotta have, have your guard up you gotta have your guard up yeah so, like, do you do Uber? I mean, not every country has Uber. So, like, how do you get, like, transportation from the hotel to the airport? Uh, yeah, that's a great a question. A lot of people are soliciting, like, hey, I got taxi, I got this. Yeah, uh-uh. Um, I would definitely say whenever you are traveling the world, whether you're solo or whether you're with someone, always take a rideshare app because that means that you and the driver's activity and locations mm-hmm. are being tracked yeah. in real time. If you are in Paris and you hail a yellow taxi cab, if anything happens to you in in that car it may not be recorded like you know how you get into an uber or a yeah. lyft and it's actually like like dash cam inside yeah. of some of their cars for their safety for your safety um so i would definitely say that um ride share app is first and then directly from the hotel is second mm-hmm. mm. okay now you really got to be safe you really really got to be safe and lastly like What's next for you? Like, like, what's next for you in terms of like your plans, your community? Where do you really see yourself taking taking eleven thousand members and you know traveling the world? So I absolutely love what I do. I want to help one million people travel mm-hmm. the world for free, and also solo if you're a woman or a guy and you're like you know what my friends don't want to backpack through thailand and then head over to sri lanka they're not really about that life or nobody else has a remote job like me right Mm -hmm. my friends have the same interest in travel but and and their resources isn't the issue but they just don't have the flexibility then Mm -hmm. i would definitely say um take one of my free webinars for sure so that way you can learn how to solo travel how to ace your first solo trip and how Mm -hmm. to do it without draining your bank account Mm. you're solving all all the problems yeah (laughs) yeah And what's the website and how can people find that? Uh, You guys can find me on Instagram or YouTube at The Passport Abuser. Click the link in my bio and a free masterclass on how to travel the world and never pay cash for a flight again will be in my bio. Well, lucky for you guys, you stayed to the end. So now you got a free class from The Passport Abuser. Um, I think this was a great episode. It's a really good one, bro. Like, I learned really, a lot really for sure. Um, you know, one of my things that stood out for me is the U.S. Embassy, you know, registering yeah. all of your every single detail of what you're going to be doing. So definitely when I take a trip solo out the country, that's definitely what I'm going to do. Mm. Um, so any final words that you want to share before we go? Yeah, just don't give up on yourself because, like, there's this 2.0 version of who you want to be and and that person is dying to meet you so yeah. don't let fear paralyze you that's good any final words bro bro i mean <laughs> this is just just for anybody watching this i mean you gotta watch it you gotta you gotta watch it a few times and or take notes because i mean i'm sitting yeah. here thinking about how i'm gonna start tracking my points start tracking my purchases Making sure I'm getting these miles. Like yeah. that's how I'm, that's yeah. what I'm thinking about right now. But it was a really good one. And thank you so much for pulling up. Like really, yeah. really. Thank really. you for coming. For sure. This was what? Like like I was telling you earlier, you had two recommendations for the pod. So definitely <laughs> it was it was meant to happen for sure. And I'm glad yeah. that you came through. So thank you. Um and we'll see you on the next episode. Yeah, like, comment, and subscribe. And definitely um we're gonna drop the link to your course below uh for anybody. You know a lot of people gonna be interested in tapping in. So right. you know, just click the link in the description and yeah, just comment, comment what you learned. Um, you know, whatever game or whatever things that you did here or anything that we might have skipped over, just let us know in the comments. But for yeah, sure. this was a good one. This was a good one. And share it with the girlies, y'all. Yes. <laughs> have a good one. Yes. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So that's-